like a bad penny, I've come back. <laughs> but just for the weekend. And it's good seeing you all. And I know you, I don't remember your names, but I know exactly who you are because you're all sitting in the same places. <laughs> Let's begin our celebration and begin all our celebrations in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. No, I'm not going to be preaching sitting down. I'm coming down. I just say, get my book. I forgot it. That's what happens when you get old. You start losing the, you know, the train pulls out and you're left standing at the station. Plus, I got a new leg. OK. As you can guess by now, this is called Good Shepherd Sunday. We've heard a lot about sheep. In all three readings, we've heard about sheep. And even the psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, the 23rd Psalm. Yeah. Sheep, 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 sheep. Well, in Jesus' time, the shepherds, would, their flocks were very small. And so there'd be maybe a, a shepherd with maybe 10 sheep. And they all gathered together in the evening to go to the sheepfold, which was an area that was walled in and fenced uh, to protect from wolves and thieves. And they would all bring their sheep in and put them in the gate, into the gate. And then in the morning, the shepherds would come in and uh, call the sheep out by name. Or he'd, you know, either call them by name or make some noise. But they all knew what he sounded like. They all, you know, whether he blew a horn or something like that, they all knew it was him. And they would follow only him. And that's why the shepherd would walk ahead of them, leading them, because they knew that he would lead them where they would be able to find food and water. In other words, the good pastures. And that's the way it was in Jesus' time. And through that, that's why Jesus did this parable about the shepherd. Because the, the sheep knew who the shepherd was. They heard his voice. The apostles were, received a call. And they left everything and followed Jesus. And down through the ages, we have also done that. Through our baptisms, we have been called by our name. That's why we are given a name at baptism. So that Jesus calls us by our name. So, and, we, and so we should, recognize, we should recognize our shepherd and we should follow him. But I would really like to draw your attention to one of the lines in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When did the Acts of the Apostles take place? The first century, right? Just after Jesus died. So it's like 1 AD. This is what? 21 AD. 2,000 2, years later. Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. My gosh, they were saying that in the first century? The corrupt generation? Well, look who they had. Caligula was emperor. I'm not going to go into what Caligula did. We don't need to hear all that crap. But he did a heck of a lot of stuff, which was not very nice, so I'll tell you that. And, uh, but the government official, the tax collectors, you know who the tax collectors were? They were fellow Jews. And they would take the taxes from the Jewish people. You know what they'd do? Rome would say, OK, you've got to collect $100. They'd charge $200 and pocket the rest for themselves. 
Corrupt generation? Yeah, it was a corrupt generation back then. Well, guess what? It's a corrupt generation today. Right now, in our country, we are living in a corrupt generation. And all we have to do is look at, read the papers. Look at the news. Some of our government leaders, and I'm not going to mention names, but you know who I'm talking about. They are supposedly Catholic. One is from California. As far as I'm concerned, she is not Catholic at all, and you know who I'm talking about. I don't have to mention a name. And our leader is also a Catholic, in name only. When they talk about it's okay to have abortions, it's okay to deal away with children, to babies, are they following church regulations? Are they following God's law? I don't think so. Are we living in a corrupt generation? Yes, we are. We are living in a corrupt generation. But we are called, each one of us is called to live our lives, to live our lives as God has taught us. And we do that by the scriptures. By coming together each Sunday and praying with each other. We live, Jesus calls us by name, and he has called us, and he will continue to call us. He is the good shepherd who leads us into everlasting life. He is the good shepherd who will lead us to those green pastures. He is that good shepherd who died for our sins. And now we are called to follow him.